you and I were joking about like this is an identity play. Like every, <laughs> every, every, every time, this is an identity game. <laughs> right. We're right. just going to figure it out. Welcome to My Got a Podcast. I'm Jim Wood. In this episode, John Powell and I review Georgia's 37 to 14 win over Georgia Tech. And we talk about our day in Athens since we were able to attend this game together. As always, remember to check out store.mygotapodcast.com to see our latest merch. And you can follow us on social media at My Got a Podcast. Finally, we'd love for you to check out our presenting sponsor, Oxia Time, at oxiatime.com. That's A X I A T I M E.com. Now, let's join the conversation in progress. We continue the trend where my God, a podcast is defeated when on site, undefeated when on site. <laughs> We're definitely not defeated when we are on site. <laughs> uh, I currently, on uh, current, currently undefeated, checking in at number one. <laughs> Amazing. So, uh, but I, I guess before before we even were able to meet up in Athens, I know uh, we, had, we had the big holiday. So I know yesterday was a kind of a crazy week, shortened week, um, work week, and podcast recording was compressed. <laughs> <laughs> to a shorter timeline even um than I think we usually do. So uh appreciate bearing bearing with on that. Um but yeah I know so like I I made the trek down to Georgia. So we did we did uh Thanksgiving uh with Kim's family on Thursday. Um and like all the sides were had. I, I felt like, you know, thanks Will uh for the the sides power ranking. I think that helped me uh like get through my plate and know what I wanted to put on there, <laughs> etc. So that was good. And then I got did, you, did you hesitate at all? <laughs> well, so it is, right. So it is, yeah. So it was kind of funny. The only, the funny thing uh, was actually like the difference between the meals because so we basically ended up doing Thanksgiving twice. Cause like my, my mom uh, and dad had like a, a second Thanksgiving for us basically on Friday mm-hmm. um, with my parents, so with my sister and, and her husband and our niece and nephew, et cetera. So uh, the funny thing was just like the West coast Thanksgiving versus the Southern Thanksgiving. So, uh, it was good. Got to have the best of, of, of both families. And, uh, you know, I had the nostalgia on Friday and came at the nostalgia on Thursday. So it was good stuff. So you know, across the board, we got to have like everything we had, we had one house had stuffing and one house had dress, dressing. So like hmm. you had, you had everything. So, uh, it was a good time. Even better. We just had a, a combined function. Both families, um, came in and, um, well, I say, I should say, my dad came in and my sister was out of town, but, yeah. um, but yeah, my dad came in and her dad and her brother and his wife and kids came over and we did the whole, the whole Thanksgiving. I had ham, I had turkey, we had it all. Okay. As I say, so you did have the dual meats because I know that's a big thing for you guys. We had the, we had the dual meats because, um, there was requests for, for turkey, um, that were not satisfied last time, last year. So, we mm. had some we had some turkey instead of steak. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, which so last be, year there was no turkey. My... There was no turkey at all last year. I think I'd forgotten that. No, there was no turkey at all last Thanksgiving. Yeah. We had, I had uh, ribeyes. Okay. Okay. I bought nice. I went out and bought like from the you know from the butcher uh ribeyes like Bobby Wilson style, you know. <laughs> nice. 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 Too funny. Well, that's good. That's good. Um yeah, and then I mean so we were able to meet up Saturday morning, so I um that was the big that was the big that was the big event man we get to we get to hang out again yeah it was <laughs> that, that was a lot of fun that was a lot of fun um we i don't even think i told you this like our morning got off to a bit of a rocky start because like one of our dogs murray wouldn't eat his food and i was like uh-oh <laughs> he was playing with his food it was like oh, yeah, omens. Oh, omens. Omens. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Nice. <laughs> uh, so I was like, "Oh man, if he's not eating, like, what's wrong with him?" But he eventually ate. So everything was fine. So, um, as but as then the big, as the big dogs do. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So so yeah, made it in. Um, it was pretty cool, man. So yeah, so you know, this was Kim's first game all season. Um, mm-hmm. I think the last game she went to was Arkansas last year. Um, I think it was the first time the wives met too, right? First time wise met. Uh, I had never met Lindsay. So, uh, oh, really? Yeah. Cause you had met Kim, but I hadn't met Lindsay. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was just the better halves of Mike out of podcast, just hanging out. That's right. We got the big, we got the full, the full group photo with the wives. Uh, that was good. Mm-hmm. Time. Good times we had. Um, but yeah. So on my way or on, we parked downtown, we we're walking through the campus. 
and uh, we were we were trying to get to the dog walk, and we were like walking across the bridge, and I heard someone yell Jim, and I turned around, and I couldn't see who was yelling Jim. I was like, ah, oh, must someone was yelling for like a different Jim, but they yelled Jim again. So it was. So shout out uh, Trent Decker spotted me uh, uh, <laughs> between uh, my my got a podcast hat and then uh, my my version of the Kirby sweatshirt that like oh my gosh, well, I tweeted out what I was going to wear the day before. Like that tweet went crazy. It was kind of weird. Um, but yeah, you, you so hit the algorithms, <laughs> hit the algorithm. it's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, so Trent, uh, had a good conversation with, with, with Trent. So that was cool. So thanks. Thanks Trent, uh, for, for grabbing a hold of me. That was, that was fun. Um, yeah. And then we made it down to the dog walk, watched the dog walk, uh, went by, I think I told you at the Oregon game when I was talking to Hunter, I ran into one of Kim's coworkers and friends, um, she and her fiance at the Oregon game. And so we went, um, and and we'll spend some time over at their tailgate. So shout out, thanks Kelly and Jason for having us over there. That was a good time. Um, and then uh, and then you and I met up over at Hug Dogs. Um, and <laughs> it was pretty funny when you walked up, Kim. I don't even know if I like. I was Kim was like, go take a stalker picture of John, and then text it to him <laughs> and see. <laughs> So like I, I, I see you. <laughs> I, I attempted to do that, but you you saw me taking your your picture, so uh, didn't funny. quite work out. But yeah, so that was awesome. So yeah, we were we were running behind, man. We were. I I got a late start. My as you know, my pre run. I didn't even have a chance to send you my my, my proof of the pre run as a, a that may be a, a a Saturday tradition that the, mm. the the listeners may not be aware of is. I usually text text Jim my, that I I did my run I did my, <laughs> my my service to to the the undefeated season. That's right. Um, oh, and man. and I didn't even get a chance to text that to you because I got up late. I was looking for all my running gear. Like I was so 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 flustered this morning. Much like much like the Georgia Bulldogs at the beginning of the game. Right. Yeah. Seriously. But yeah, we were a solid forty minutes behind, and then I think I texted you. I was like, I felt like I was I was on my way to Gaffney or something like that, <laughs> uh, with how much traffic was was backed up, and seemingly like in maddening fashion, like you know, like it, traffic like opens up, and then you're like, wait, why are we just standing still? <laughs> we're wide open oh. right now. <laughs> yes, yes, I always I always wonder that. <laughs> good old good old three sixteen. It's basically yeah, it's basically like driving into Gaffney on game day. Mm. Um, yeah but uh but yeah we were we were behind so i think we only get to tell i mean i, I think i got a couple of beers and that was that was it and like <laughs> then off, yeah. off, we, off we had to go yeah yeah it was uh yeah we missed i, I know it was funny so we were we we're at uh, jason and daniel's tailgate for a while and then we were well we were walking over to greg's and then we ran into patrick and megan on the way to greg's and we're talking to them and then it was like oh shoot we need to go to the game so apologies greg that's what we missed. We we ran into yeah. another fraternity brother on the way over, and uh, uh, we're just catching up with them. It's like, oh, time to go into the game. Which so then, like at that point, we split up. We, and you guys were like, uh, you kind of meandered. Oh yeah, because I was saying like you could most likely come sit with us if there was room. So I needed to go verify that. But Correct. you guys, you guys kind of stayed like down by the hedges and stuff for pregame for a bit, right? We did. I you know I kind of soaked up. Because I wasn't really sure where we were gonna sit uh, when I told Lindsay where we were gonna where we were potentially gonna go. Like she was like, "Oh my gosh, I don't know if I can." She was like dizzy and stuff. So mm -hmm. anyway, um, taking her that high up was probably going to be a problem for me. But gotcha. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, we I, I wanted to kind of take in take in the seniors, see if I can catch a glimpse of folks walking by. I got some videos of Stetson, you know, mm -hmm. from the sideline walking in and um i think the let's see what else, i i saw i saw um must champ i i shouted at must champ i don't even know if, i don't know if i told you that like <laughs> you didn't tell me this part so like i apparently like i just need to like hang out on the sides because i can just <laughs> yell at the coaches and they'll like turn and look at me and be like hey <laughs> uh, that's awesome so i yelled at must champ and told him go dogs and, and he just gave me a fist bump i didn't get a go dogs back like Stacy Searles, but I did get a fist bump. <laughs> but I kind of, I kind of chalked that up to, I kind of chalked that up to Muschamp being uh, dialed in. Could be. Um, could be. But yeah, it was, uh, it, it was, it was pretty cool. Um, saw Shu, saw Drive. Um, let's see. I think the the other really cool thing was I saw all these number ten jerseys walking around. <laughs> um, 
And I quickly realized that it was uh, the unofficial, official, unofficial My Got a Podcast, uh, wide receiver of My Got a Podcast. Uh, it was Kiaris Jackson's family who was, was on the sideline. And I shouted out to them and said, we love Kiaris. <laughs> and, and his mom turned around, which I assume it was his mom. Uh, she kind of looked like a matriarch of the group. Yeah. Um, she turned around and was like doing a mom, mom fist bump and clapping and saying thank you. Nice. Um, so that was a nice little, nice little subtle moment for, <laughs> for, for a, a, a mem- one half of my God podcast. Did and you then, say? Did you say I'm sorry, Miss Jackson? That I doubted your son two I years ago. Not. Okay, I did okay. not. I, I mean, <laughs> the the band was blaring. I was actually surprised they could even hear me. Uh, um, but uh, but then you know, at that point, you know, the band was going, and then the the helicopter flyover was pretty cool the, yeah that the was apache, cool. the apache flew over and then um really wanted to i, I told them I was like, well let's just stay here for the lone trumpeter yeah and we got the lone trumpeter which was cool and then made our way up up the stairs to to the wood section <laughs> yes nice um which you were then greeted by and found out the fact that we had some tech fans sitting around us. And so you got the full <laughs> sitting with the Wood family experience of what it's like when there's opposing I fans did. sitting I near did. us. <laughs> it was it was a little surprising, to be honest. Everybody was a little <laughs> impassioned. <laughs> Lindsay was Lindsay was caught off guard. So I think she was like, she was like, I found you, I found your your equals. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh good times. Yeah. Don't interact with the opposing fans. That's my advice. Do as I say, not as I do. (laughs) (laughs) I guess I might as well repeat what I said. So, you know, like I said, don't interact people, people. But uh, so, well, this is related to the game. So I I think uh, what I didn't open with was like, hey, the game went exactly as we thought. Because actually the score was pretty close to what we thought. So I I think we just didn't think it was going to start out the way it did. So you know, when Georgia Tech came out and marched down the field on that opening drive and scored a touchdown, um, mm-hmm. there's a guy in front of us who was very, very happy about it, and which is fine, you know, cheering your team. I got no problem with that. Um, but he was like turning around and like doing this weird, like mocking, barking thing, like at us and stuff. And he was celebrating a lot. And so this is when like you shouldn't say anything. But what I said to him was, because he's wearing a number one Georgia Tech jersey. So I said, You're having a lot of fun right now, Reggie Ball. Is what I said, and yeah, because he, he was the number one. <laughs> yeah, and then he was like, "Yeah, I am." I was like, "Okay, well, that's good." Uh, but yeah, I don't, he wasn't having fun later, but that's fine. Um, there were some very nice, uh, like <laughs> tech, like student-ish age uh, kids sitting in front of us. Um, they were very, they were very friendly. We talked to them a bunch, but they didn't. Anyway, they didn't appear to be associated. They did not know that guy. Yeah, no, for sure. But whatever. At any rate, like I said, just. The best thing to do is to not interact with them. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I did not follow that rule. So I need to remember that more. Yeah. At any rate. But yeah, so man, that, you know, I guess kind of getting into the game, right? Like that first drive, I mean, they, you know, that would definitely was unexpected. Um, you know, I imagine that was pretty like scripted, I, I assume. I know there was a, there was actually like two plays that they ran twice. Like they ran the same kind of like wide receiver, wide receiver screen over to the right. Um, like actually on back to back plays at one point. And then that fourth down play that they ran, uh, where they was like, I had the long pass play. Um, they had run that same play earlier in the drive and it didn't work the first time and it did the second time. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it was a good drive. It was a good drive and, um, you know, kind of tip of the cap to them. I think they had a good plan and it, it worked. And, you know, actually after the game, I saw uh, Jason Huggins and he'd asked me like, like, did, what do you think happened like after that? Like, cause we just shut them down. You're know, like, did we adjust, you know, what, what adjustments were made or, or anything like that? And, and I had no answer at the time, but after I rewatched it, I don't think we really did. I think just like, I think we just kind of stayed the course on defense and we've got a lot better players and, you know, that kind of played out off the rest of the game. And I think too, a lot of it was um, Georgia tech came out fired up with a lot of emotion and we did not. <laughs> like, like, yeah. Like we didn't look interested, and it was it was the classic. It was the classic, you know, nooner nooner game. Like uh, yeah. this this game tends to have that kind of um, tends to have that kind of vibe for one team or the other. Um, I mean, I, maybe I'm wrong. I, I don't I don't know. You've been going to this game for a, a lot of time, uh, more more than I have. Um, but it just if you don't come out ready to play, 
it's just going to be one of those slow moving games. It seems like. Yeah, no, I think that's right. I think that's right. And I mean, you know, it's like, it's so different now as opposed to like when we were in school, when they were like, as you know, we were like equals back then. Right. Like mm-hmm. it was more back and forth. And I mean, they got us three years in a row. You know, I got to school. I've said that a million times, but like um, now, like, I think, uh, I think actually Graham said it pretty well in this 12 takeaways that like, you know, this game has basically been a walkover in the, in recent memory. And mm-hmm. um I, again, like hat tip to Brent Key. Like I said, man, I think he he made a big difference with that program um, after they let Geoff go, and he's got them playing. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I guess you could say he's got them playing above their potential, or maybe he's getting them to their potential or closer to their potential. You know, right? As opposed to Collins, I think Collins had them not living up to their potential. It's probably the more fair way to say it. So. Yeah, yeah, I would say that tends to happen when you have a midget with capri pants on coaching you. It's hard to take. <laughs> it's hard to take that person seriously. And then yeah. versus you've got a guy that's um, you know has actually been there before, and I don't. I don't think he had lost to Georgia in in his career. Um, I know he won his as, last as, as a yeah, player. Yeah, he won his last three for sure. Well, you know, I, I, there's. I don't know. I just think that it's just one of those things where we just didn't come out. I think that I, I don't know. They were aided by a lot of, I think at one point I remember looking on the replay, it was like, we were, we had like a hundred yards worth of penalties or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it just felt like that they just had drives extended by these like random pin. I mean, we had, we had literally got a penalty called on us for aiding the running back at one point. <laughs> Like what? Yes. And then Brock Bowers had a pass interference. Not Brock Bowers, but there was a there was a pick play that was called where mm. there was literally no contact whatsoever. Yeah, um, that was bad. You had, you had uh, Arian Smith's catch like called back. Then you had Brock Bowers called for a face mask. Oh my um, gosh. Yeah, I mean there was just so many like weird like random penalties and stuff like that that just seemed like that. Um, I don't know. We it's almost like we were fighting with the the twelfth man. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, that 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 definitely felt like a, a throwback to playing Georgia Tech when we, when we were in college. Um, I I'm actually not sure. Like, I assume that was an ACC crew because um, they usually do that. Where like the road team, um, it's their conferences officials. It's mm. usually how it goes. Um, uh, but I'm not sure. I never I never saw that like written down anywhere. And I, I just looked at like their. I don't recognize the the referee's name or anything. James Carter was the the head official. I, that doesn't mean anything to me. So I, I don't know. I don't recognize that name. So could be, couldn't be. Not really sure. But yeah, man, that was pretty brutal. Um, I think some of them, like on rewatch, weren't so bad. But the 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 interference on Lad was a horrible call. I think he got held. If anything, um, and he didn't touch the guy that was covering Bowers. So that was just really weird. The kind of. Felt like they were kind of calling it a pick play or something. Um, mm-hmm. And there was the, another, there was another play where we had a um, uh, was the the face mask and then um, horse collar at the same time on Brock yeah. Bowers. Yeah, that they they missed that call. Um, there was a couple of holds where I felt like we were chasing after the quarterback and we were getting held and they didn't call that. Like I don't know. There's yeah. just there's just so many little things. Like again, again, you know, you look at all the things that go wrong for you. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and they still couldn't, they still couldn't do anything. on us. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like that's where, I mean, kind of to go back to like what we said, right. Like we said, if you protect the football, you're going to win the game. And I mean, we did and we did. Right. Um, so the turnover margin for the game was even uh, both teams had one turnover and ours was in garbage time. And that led mm-hmm. to their garbage time touchdown. I mean, um, that's where, like I was saying on the, on the predictions, um, let's see what, cause it was, uh, I'm trying to remember what you had. So I had 38 to six, um, you had 42 to six, right. Uh, and then actual was 37, 14. Like I was right there. It, I was, it, it was 30, it was 37 to seven. Um, and that probably should have been what it was if we didn't have that, that late fumble. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, again, but that's that's where I was saying, like, I, I think by the end of the game, it kind of played out about how we thought it would. Right. It just I, I think really it was that beginning. I mean, the the first drive and then just the fact that we only had what 10 it was what 10 to seven and a half. Right. So, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I, I would have expected that 
we had a bigger lead at the half and then kind of called the dogs off later. And it, it wasn't so much that, uh, that's definitely not how it went, went down in this one, but I am curious and I haven't, I haven't, I haven't definitely haven't heard any like leaked audio or anything, but, uh, I feel like someone did say there was a pretty like lively, um, halftime speech, but I don't know by Kirby. Um, cause he seemed pretty calm coming off the field with the sideline reporter from my rewatch, but, um, I imagine he probably gave him a, let's, we'll say he gave him a pep talk at that. I mean, he hadn't, he, he didn't, he must not have been too bothered because I mean, I don't yeah. know. This is just another one of those games that George is playing with his food again. I remember I like, I mm-hmm. think you were getting, getting some beverages and snacks, but, um, I think I mentioned to, to Lou, I was like, you know, George is playing with their food again. And he goes, yeah, exactly right. <laughs> Frustrating. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I mean, you, you look at the win probability, I think our lowest percentage um, was in the third quarter, which is still crazy to think about like that, that, mm. that, that period of time where we just got a, multiple turnovers in the red zone and punched, punched in all of a sudden, it kind of felt like the, the Florida game, the Florida game last year where we were, we scored 20 points in like a matter of minutes before halftime. And the game was basically over right after that. And that's kind of what it felt like after we finally got some, some momentum, some turnovers, some fumbles, a block punt or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, So, uh, but even, even at that, like before, right. Even before any of those turnovers happened or those momentum plays happened, we were still at 91% you know, win probability. That was the lowest that we were at. And that was when it was seven to 10 Georgia in with mm-hmm. 11, 11, 29 left in the, in the third quarter. Okay. So even though that game was so tight, we still had that win probability sitting at a very comfortable spot, which, yep. you know, it felt that way the whole time. Like there was a guy that was sitting next to me, bless his heart. Hopefully he does. He's not a listener, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was just dropping f bomb after f bomb about all this stuff, and I was like, "Man, I get it. Like, I'm frustrated, but like, dude, they are doing nothing. <laughs> like, eventually, yeah. eventually, we're gonna figure this out." Yeah, that and was, it was certainly it was certainly annoying. I mean, I think that you know we talk about you know manufactured adversity, right? Like, mm-hmm. I'm not saying that they threw the first possession of the game, but like, <laughs> we can now now Kirby has the luxury of being able to tell his guys like, look, tech scored on you guys in the first quarter. What do you think Ohio state or what do you think Michigan's going to do or LSU? What do you think they're going to do this weekend? You know, right. Like you can't relax. There's no, no, no days off in season. You know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah. um, He's got that edge. He's got that edge going for him on, on what's, what's upcoming. And it's just, yeah, I just never, I never was bothered. Like Lindsay was like, "Are you not upset?" And I was like, "Yeah, I mean, but this is what we've done all season long." Like, e- e- yeah, totally agree, totally agree. I we, so we, you and I were joking about it. You and I were joking about it. like this is an identity play. Like every <laughs> every, every every time, this is an identity game. <laughs> right, we're right. just gonna figure it out. And uh, I, on rewatch, uh, upon rewatch, like my first my my first take on the offense, like I guess we we'll just talk about George's offense. Um, I was more surprised watching the game on replay versus mm. in the in the stadium. I did not realize how ineffective our passing game was when I was yeah. watching it live in the stadium. So rewatching it um, on the, on the rewatch was like. God, Lee, we, we had like 40 yards passing or something like that in mm-hmm. the third quarter. Mm-hmm. And so, that's just crazy to me. Yeah, I, I want to actually, I'm so I'm glad you brought that up because I had I wanted to talk about that because something uh, you actually said in the Kentucky review, like you asked, had Kentucky made a blueprint to beat Georgia around like mm-hmm. trying to take away Stetson Bennett. And, mm-hmm. and I, I think that's interesting because like, you know, before the blueprint was stop the run and make Stetson beat you. So mm-hmm. the one thing I want to say is I feel like it does say a lot about Stetson Bennett and the way opposing teams see him now that now they're trying to, you know, blitz Stetson, make him uncomfortable, throw him off his game. That's the plan instead of make him beat you because they know he can beat you. Right. So they want to prevent that from happening and then let it and then, you know, maybe leave some room for the run game, which I, which we took advantage of, which was good to see us do that. So I, I thought that was interesting. And then the other thing I would say is like, I think Georgia tech did try that 
you know, maybe Kentucky showed that maybe people will try it, but you know, tech, they didn't have the players to do that. Right. Like they, it wasn't, it was not sustainable. Um, so, but yeah, they didn't have, they didn't have the offense to do it either. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's, that's kind of my, my take on the whole thing is that you, you, maybe you can come up against, I don't think, I don't, I do not think that you have it in LSU. Um, the one team that we had left on our potential schedule, like, you know, assuming we beat LSU in number one and we go to the Peach Bowl, we're playing number four. So um, TCU is not super concerning for me. Um, yeah. The, you know, Michigan, frankly, is not super concerning to me either. Mm-hmm. Um, the the one team that was a little bit worrisome for me was Ohio State. Um, yeah. So, like, if you were to try to do that, um I believe that Michigan's bread and butter is, you know, the the running backs. Yep. Um, I'm not really sure. We'd have to dive into I'd have to dive a little bit more into what's what TCU has going on. But like the the broadcast crew talked about this. Like if you are planning on running the ball against UGA, good luck. Um, yeah, seriously. If you just want to continue to, you know, two yards, three yards in a cloud of dust, um, all day long and maybe limit the possessions and then try to shut Georgia down. Um, and let make sets and Bennett, you know, one dimensional take it, taking away the pass and let, mm-hmm. let Georgia try to grind it out mm-hmm. and just take the time away from them. Right. Um, that could be, I mean, that could, that could be problematic for us if someone was able to actually do that. Now, the problem with that is, is that if we start getting our running game going, then you start having to pull defenders into the box, you have to start. You know, sending some sa- sending some safeties in because that's what they ultimately were were starting to do. They're sending safeties. They're sending corners. Yeah, and that just opened up. You know, with the wheel route. <laughs> oh <laughs> wheel man, route. yes, yeah, that was <laughs> Which awesome. I, I seriously thought he was going to take that to the house. I thought he was too. He was so close, so close. And then they they finally called a horse collar on that tackle. By the way, yes. But and yeah, man, you had Macintosh had seven two point yards of carry. Edwards had seven point one yards of carry, and Kendall Milton had fourteen yards of carry. So. I mean, it was almost like we should have had a sign up that said we run this state. <laughs> <laughs> I, be- I, I believe when young Andrew Smart held up such a sign post game. Did he? I didn't see that. Oh, yeah. Man, I missed it. Yeah, that's out there. That's awesome. Uh, I, I wanted to call out a couple of things. Um, so we, we had a 99-yard touchdown drive of our own um, in this game. So that was good to see, <laughs> uh, which included a play in which the ball – was handed off to one Brock Bowers. He shifted like into tailback um, mm-hmm. or running back at least. I was a little close to the line scrimmage, made it be a tailback, but so that uh, that warmed my heart. <laughs> Even though it was only like a two yard game, uh, I guess he, he, you he can vouch. I got very excited. Up. <laughs> yes, he did. He goes, Brock Bowers just lined up at running back, and I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> um, the other thing was so the play that you mentioned earlier, um, where the Brock Bowers face mask penalty, uh, not on that drive, obviously that was on a a field goal drive, I think, or we may even punt it. I'm trying to remember, but, um, so we, we had fourth and one and we lined up like we were going to go for it and we called him out, but that on that play, AD Mitchell was in, uh, at receiver Mm -hmm. as I guess a bit of a decoy. And what's interesting is I didn't notice, I didn't even notice that in the stadium, but on the replay, AD Mitchell was pissed that we didn't snap the ball. I don't know if you saw that. He was like screaming at the sideline. Like he wanted to run a play. Um, so I thought that was interesting. So I don't know what that means. Um, that could just be emotions running high during a game, but I thought that was interesting. Um, but yeah, that was actually, so then after that timeout, we ran that play, the, um, I don't know, whatever we'll call it end around, I guess, to Brock Bowers, that had that, the funky penalty. So, um, mm-hmm. Yeah, just, just wanted to call that out. And then also uh, the Rosemary Jack Saint touchdown catch. That was a heck of a catch. Uh, heck of a catch. Touchdown of the game, I believe. Um, that was incredible. Um, and again, like, you know, I mean, hoping that I can say welcome back, Kendall Milton. I mean, he he's starting. He is continuing to look like his old self again. He's got that. Uh, he's got a, a burst uh, that I think was was missing for a while. Um, so just a few that things was, there. That was a good it was a good burst for sure. Uh, yeah. when he, when he sprang loose, um, I don't know. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know that. I don't know that Dejan takes that to the house. Maybe Kenny takes it to the house. I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's, but think... there, no one was able to close him down. So that was, that was nice to see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess a Let's couple, spe- 
Well, I was going to say some special teams things, right? So you mentioned the 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 block punt or the tackle. We, I guess we just tackled the punter, maybe. Yeah. I don't know there was so much as a block punt. Uh, but yeah, so that was we, good to we see. took advantage of their mistakes. That's right. That's right. So that, and then also, you know, while Kiaris didn't have a catch on senior day, uh, he did probably have one of the better kickoff returns we've had all year. I mean, not that it was a spectacular or anything, but it was a good one. It was positive. We didn't get tackled like inside the 20. Um, mm-hmm. So that was good. And then let's see, Lad had a pretty good punt return. Uh, I thought he was going to yeah. break that one, take down the house. I, that was good. He was, had, had he, had he not, did he cut outside or did he cut inside? I can't he remember. Like cross he cross pass he, with a blocker that like, like Rosemary. I, I, don't think, know, I think it was Rosemary Jack Saint. Number one, yeah. whoever yeah, I think was so. wearing number one at that time. Um, had he just followed him? I think he, yeah. I think he went outside. Had he stayed in the middle? I feel like that he had uh, a big, a better convoy. Although in yeah. his defense, he probably didn't know there was someone closing behind him, but right. Um, right. For sure. Yeah. He, he um, was very close, very close. Yeah. And I guess the other thing is something that I didn't really thought about, but I, or I wasn't thinking about it in the moment, but I, got it. I wanted to credit you. You were thinking about it. Cause I believe you said to me that apparently we had to come to jackpots senior day. Uh, <laughs> because jackpot <laughs> Leslie had a great game. Yeah. Um, that, no, yeah, that, talk, talk about an unsung hero in the season. Like I didn't, right? I mean, we haven't really talked about him in a, in a minute, but I'm not yeah. sure where he is ranking in terms of the, um, uh, is it the Ray guy? And that's, that's, that's the punter, whatever the, whatever the best kicker in the country. I don't know where he's ranking on those mm-hmm. right now, but he's, he's like a 92% on the season and he had hit a 50 yard field goal. I didn't realize that he had hit a 50 yard field goal in the game. I think I looked down and it was like, Wait, Jackpot hit a 50-yard field goal? Yeah. <laughs> Where did he, I miss that? Yeah, and he crushed it. That was going he away from it. that was going away from our seats. Um mm-hmm. he absolutely crushed that one. Yeah. So that was good to see. Good, good to see that. Uh I guess on the senior day note, Bobby Beal had a uh, football recovery. So uh it was big, good stuff. Good it was difference. good. Day. It was. It was. So and apparently, and apparently they get a uh, a replica of the governor's cup credit mm. to um that's George right. Foster and 100 Sanford for for that little tidbit when they discussed with Joe Hamilton, which if you haven't listened to that episode, is pretty cool listening to the two guys talk about really competitive UGA versus Georgia Tech games, <laughs> which is not something that many of us are used to in recent years. Right. Um, it was good, and it confirmed I, my suspicion that Joe Hamilton does seem like a pretty nice guy. <laughs> We yes. talked about that once I, uh, at one point in the past. Uh, he seems like a good guy. I, I love I love Joe Hamilton. I always I always thought he was a nice dude. Um, yeah. Kind of like a tech version of DJ Shockley, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's fair. But uh, but yeah, they were talking about the Governor's Cup and how the winner of this game gets a replica of the Governor's Cup, which I did not know before listening to that episode. Yeah. Um I think it's so, the senior class. I think the senior class yeah, of the winning team the gets seniors. a replica. Yeah. Yeah. Like, only the seniors. So if you lose that game like Kirby did uh, on his mm, senior yeah. season, it's a good you, point. You don't get you don't get that. Mm, that's a good point. <laughs> so George even asked him, he said, You you, you got your you got your statue? He's like, Heck yeah, I got it. <laughs> Yeah, with the the score emblazoned on it and everything, and like you you talk to the senior classes, they 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 mentioned it like that's something that those guys talk about. Like, oh, you don't have one, sorry. <laughs> right, right, yeah, no, for sure, that's that's true. Yeah, and George got his too because George was on that uh, fifty-one to seven uh, team, uh, yeah. to, to in two thousand two. So good stuff, good stuff. I don't have much more in this one. Um, why don't we take a, a quick moment to remind everyone that uh, season three of my got a podcast is presented by Oxia time. Uh, Oxia time is a custom watch company. And you, if you haven't seen them yet, you really need to go check out their Georgia 2021 national championship watch collection. Uh, these time pieces are officially licensed by both the college football playoff and the university of Georgia. Uh, it's got the power G on the face as well as 2020 national champions with the CFP logo. The CFP logo is in the clasp. Uh, it's a very classy watch. John and I both have one. We love wearing them. We were wearing them around, uh, the game. Actually, John, we got to, I don't think I have the picture Lindsay took of our watches. You got to send that to me. We got, we got to put that one. Oh yeah. Uh, so we got to get a hold of that one. We got to put glasses on it and get that one. We Um, got to put glasses on it. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> um so yeah so be sure definitely go go check them out uh at oxiatime.com that's a-x-i-a-t-i-m-e.com 
And exciting, uh, actually, like just this week, um, Oxy Time is also now partnering uh, with our friends over at Bulldog B- Bulldogs Paddling Breast Cancer. Uh, so if you recall, we had Dwight on uh, earlier this year uh, as part of our Vanderbilt preview, talking about the pink out and all the great things that Bulldogs Paddling Breast Cancer does around the Athens area. Uh, so you can actually right now use code BBBC10 uh, and still get 10% off your timepiece and also a uh, portion of the proceeds will go to Bulldogs battling breast cancer. Um, so be sure to go check them out and uh, need to get those orders in ahead of the holidays. And take a look at the latest uh, latest edition of Bulldog Illustrated for the SEC Championship um, week, mm-hmm. which as we record that this week, but um, th- there's a there's an ad that you may actually see some of the you may actually see the watches um, in in your in your edition of Bulldog Illustrated. Awesome, nice, nice, yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, uh, heavily involved with Bulldog Illustrated is our our, our good friend uh, Jeff Dantzler of the Bulldog Branch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the red meal grits red meal grits oh, <laughs> so good which i did not go to this weekend uh oh well that's okay what Although lily is still talking about it by the way <laughs> I, I told i told jason and dana i was like lily is still talking about the hamburger <laughs> from the old <old-time> grill <laughs> crazy it was so good the key uh, the key to a woman's heart <laughs> good that's <word>. right that's <laughs> right uh let's do a quick um coach trail bill update so hey have how about this? That we both went six and two on the week. Uh, so you maintained your your five pick lead. Um, let's. I mean, you 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 had a clean sweep on the offense. You went three and zero. Oh. Um, you know, I feel like where my where I continue to thrive is these special teams and miscellaneous questions. Oh, there you got those both right as well. So that's okay. And like, like, but the funny thing is like the consistency actually too. Like, so on offense, I'm I'm twenty and sixteen on offense and defense. And then you're like 24 and 12 on offense and 22 and 14 on defense. So pretty close. I don't know. Just looking at some of these numbers is kind of funny. Um, I see that. I see that my Kirby smart strategy of bend, but don't break yeah. is, <laughs> is, is, is panning out for the over-unders. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like it. Um, I guess like, you know, I mean, it's a, you know, only the second time um, we, we are really talking about that one. This is the, this is what, this is the third time ever in the history of Georgia football that we've made it to 12 and 0. Um, so that would be 1980, uh, last year and this year. Uh, so pretty, mm-hmm. uh, good times, good times in Athens. So pr- pretty, pretty, pretty cool stuff happening. Um, th- with think, this team, I think that we talked about, um, we talked about on the last episode, how Kirby and, you know, UGA have now joined the, mm-hmm. you know, 08, 09 Alabama team and the, the two, I can't remember the years for Spurrier, the, yeah. the Florida, those two Florida teams that went undefeated in the SEC. Mm-hmm. Well, now UGA joins two other teams nationally that have had a 12 and 0 season, have had undefeated regular seasons in back to back years. Okay. Um, I think it was, uh, was it Clemson and Florida State? Okay. It was Clemson and and for so the um, uh, uh, the the Trevor Lawrence Clemson teams mm. and the Jamise uh, Jamis Winston Florida Jamis. State team James Jamis <laughs> whatever Jamis <laughs> crab, crab crab legs, legs. <laughs> crab legs Winston <laughs> crab legs Winston and um, and Auburn with a lake um, yeah yeah. yeah. Uh. Those well, two teams, those two teams, um, those two teams were were special, and it's yeah. you, you 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 hear you you hear everybody talking about this, like you know they're frustrated by how we're winning. We're not winning by mm-hmm. enough. We're not winning by you know enough style points. We're not scoring you know sixty points on Vanderbilt um, in in desperation to stay relevant, like some SEC East teams out there. <laughs> um, you got guy sitting next to me wearing a baseball jersey at the at the football game, saying, you know, dropping all sorts of swear words and stuff. But like, literally, we're we're we were not stressing that game at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think that the average Georgia fan that if you if you know someone or are someone or are married to someone that is yelling and screaming at the TV, um consistently like i'd say like over the course of like three or more quarters (laughs) Mm, 
right. um, about how angry they are about this team. Um, they are not a serious person that <laughs> under, that understands what this team is about. Yeah. Um, I think that Graham, you know, Graham and those guys have done a really good job of, you know, categorizing these games. And I think that they recognize that there was just I, I, on, on the one hand, this is like exactly what we asked for. Mm-hmm. Hey, you yeah. know, we, we tried throwing it. It's not working. Uh, we're dropping back. We're having to roll out. Like we're, you know, it's just not working. The passes aren't there, whatever, whatever that means. Mm-hmm. And so we, we pivot and we go to something else. And I know that Dustin uh, from dogs, dog central, uh, Dustin, he's like, he, he had mentioned like, Oh, we're just going to do run, run, pass, run, run, pass, run, run, pass. <laughs> right. Right. And I, it's, it's, it's the, the old Mike Bobo kind of thing, right? Like mm-hmm. we do the same, we do those same kind of pattern, but you know, as frustrating as it is, that is the sign of a offensive coordinator and a head coach and defensive staff that are confident in what they have on their on their plate. Yeah, yep. they know that they know that they're not going to get beat, or they know that they're going to get beat less often on defense mm-hmm. um, than they are on offense. In my opinion, um, we're just. We just kind of stick around and bide our time. And I do think you you were joking, like, are we going to have, you know, any plays that we've left out? Are we holding anything back? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I would say that we're not necessarily. I mean, there was some, there was some, there was some creativity. There was some end arounds, you know, end around mm-hmm. to, to try to convert. We had a rollout on, you know, the goal line situation. Um, yeah. We I mean, we, to, we, we threw the ball on fourth down, right? To Rock Bowers for the touchdown. So, right. Um, so I think that there's definitely some, some areas that you could look at and say, man, you know, they, they, they kind of went, they went to the mattresses, if you will, to try to get something, um, converted there. Uh, yeah, I don't know that they have everything necessarily out there. Like you said, you mentioned AD Mitchell being out there. I mm-hmm. heard Kirby talking about it this week about, um, you know, how he, he, he could have been ready to go. They expect him to maybe do some more participation this week. Mm. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that he will, but he it's probably gonna be a George Pickens situation, in my opinion. Like yeah, maybe he comes yeah. back in the semifinal, maybe he comes back in the final. Um, unless they just have everything under control. And that's what's been going on in this uh, with this team. Like they've literally never been not in control of a game the entirety of the season, with the exception of the Missouri game, but you still felt like mm. they were gonna you still felt like they were gonna pull it out. Yep. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I totally agree. Like there's, you don't need to be munsoning. And um, I think we said, I feel like we said this a lot last year and we probably haven't said it enough this year is like, you need to enjoy it, man. Like, uh, you know, like these are the good old days, right? I, I, I've mentioned that to somebody on, on dog central, like, you know, Andy Bernard said it the best on, uh, on the office. Like you, you wish there was a way to know that you're in the good old days before they're gone. So enjoy this uh this is a heck of a ride this team is i mean they may not be perfect but the record is right so yeah uh, they're perfect yeah i mean yeah. listen guys i i heard so i'll put it to you this way um you know the, the this team is just is just lunch pail like i hesitate mm-hmm. to say that because it's, it's, they haven't actually been lunch pail but like They've been just quietly dominating people, like just mm-hmm. just quietly just beating the piss out of everyone. Yeah, and you feel like that, it, like some of these games were like name your score games. If we didn't like take the, you know, if we were weren't handcuffed the entire game or whatever, right? Like if, if I told you before the season that Stetson Bennett was going to have three thousand one hundred and fifty one passing yards <laughs> on the season. <laughs> and be ranked and be ranked number two as a passing yard leader. Like, yeah. would you have taken that deal preseason? Heck yeah, he is number two in the SEC for uh, on on passing yard leaders, regular yep. season passing yard numbers. Yep. Yeah. Like, what more do you ask for from from the kid? Like, I get it. Like, he's super frustrating at times. Like. Why don't you keep it? I guess that's something that we haven't talked about because you and I talked about this at multiple points. Yeah, like if he did, if he'd have just kept the ball uh, on one of those keepers, like he could, he could have just walked into the end zone from thirty yards out or whatever. Yeah, um, those but, those are those are definitely frustrating 
points. Those are frustration points throughout the season that have been there. Like, why doesn't he throw this ball more perfectly? Why doesn't he <laughs> yeah. drop that in a little bit better? Um, but like I on the keepers it, too, we don't know, like if he even has that option to play, like I say that, right. Like when it happens, but you don't know, like he, it may just be a handoff well, and he doesn't even have the option. And, and then we did keep it later in the game. He didn't score. <laughs> Well, yeah, like, uh, sure. Like I get, I get that. Like, but I feel like that on some of those situations, like the secret is out on Stetson, right? That he, he kind of burned his red shirt on that regard in what was it? The South Carolina game where he like mm. juked the kids out of the shoes. Yeah. Like the goal line Stetson Bennett keeper is, is, is a known quantity at this point. Mm. There's film out there on it. Okay. There's yeah, a, yeah. Th- there maybe is some film on him keeping it like the, the play against Auburn where he ran scampered for like 50 mm. yards for a touchdown, but like, let him keep it when we're, <laughs> when we're sitting there on the 30, 40 yard line where everybody thinks we're going to pass it and, or run yeah. it, you know what I mean? To convert, yeah. to convert and like, just, just keep it, you know, one time, like, right. I don't know. There, there, there's there were a lot of plays like that out there. Um, I heard um, I heard a who who was it? It was an NFL player, Roddy White. Uh, oh my Roddy, gosh. Roddy White on Twitter said that he had looked at and, and is just convinced that Stetson is not a good quarterback. Let me tell you, man, he's outgaining Mister Heisman himself, Hendon Hooker, um, or you know, the Rocky yeah. Top self proclaimed Heisman finalist um he is out passing mr heisman himself bryce young um from yeah. alabama and spencer rattler who looks like a uh, he's probably going to be surging up the draft boards like all of these guys anthony richardson ar15 will levis who was preseason like mr you know potentially one of the first quarterbacks taken off the board like all of those guys are getting outshined by Mr. Walk on himself. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, Stetson Bennett uh has never lost a game between the hedges as a starter. So I think 13, I think 13 and 0. Name yeah. a quarterback that can say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's unbelievable. Uh all right, man. I um I one thing I did want to be sure to mention, I thought that was pretty cool. Kirby uh came out in the in the post-game press conference dressed up like Vince Dooley. So he he, he was actually wearing one of Vince Dooley's ties. And he had on a he had on a sweater. Uh so hat tip to Kirby. That was pretty cool. Did I, did I miss this? Yeah, I guess so. He did his post game so. press conference in Vince Dooley attire. So that was pretty cool. So yeah, you gotta go check out the pictures of that. It's pretty cool. Um, okay. so there was that. And then just uh sorry we didn't get to hang out and have dinner with you guys, but at least we got to chat for a bit post game. We did, man. <laughs> post game post game was probably my favorite. Um mm-hmm. you know, we we got to hang out a little bit. Um it sounds like the, the tailgates pretty much closed up shop because it looked like it was going to rain for, mm-hmm. and it kind of did for a while. But um, the the post game for me was was so great. Like that's that's the benefit of having the nooner in Athens. Was um, mm. you know the game gets out, we were able to walk through North Campus. Um, you know we happened to, to be able to park like right next to Bar South um, downtown, which is where we were planning on eating dinner at anyway if we could get in. There was nobody there. We got in, had a good time, had some cocktails, and um, you know, just uh, I, I was trying to save you a seat. And yeah, by the way, that, by the way, that table that I that table that I pointed out never got sat in. <laughs> uh, whatever. Yeah, I talked to the hostess about it. Whatever. <laughs> so, so ridiculous. Uh, um, but yeah, it was it was great. I had had some had some Weller and we had some good Southern food. And then after that, I went, went by and my wife wanted to take me shopping. And so we went to onward reserve and she went crazy at onward reserve. <laughs> so That's too I, funny. I have some clothes for the holidays. <laughs> nice. Nice. Well, that was fun, man. That was fun. Uh, I got a podcast undefeated in person and uh, right, I think I'm getting this right. First time we've sat at a game to get together since Clemson last year. Right since Clemson for sure, yeah, 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 that was fun. That was fun. I don't think that we, I don't think we sat in any other ones. Yeah, yeah. So that was a good time. Good times are had. That was a lot of fun. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. All right. Well, we'll be back soon uh, to preview. You know, the game that's always the goal to make it to um, at the beginning of the season. That's where everything runs through is the SEC championship. Um, we'll be back soon to preview that one. Absolutely, man. It's time to go get 
some can we get some raging Cajuns out of here? Uh, they're a little <laughs> bit a little bit more de- uh, a little bit more depressed than um, the average fan in this game. <laughs> yeah, seriously, seriously, for sure. As evidenced by the ticket prices that I've seen. <laughs> right, right. We'll get right. to that. <laughs> nice, nice. Awesome. Well, this was fun, man. It was great. Good times. And um, go dogs. Go dogs.